Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 verses 21 to the end. Ketam bhuppa sarga lokam vishalam Shine punye madhya lokam vishanti Devam trai dharma manu prapanna Gratagatam kama kama lamante Ananya shintayan toma Ye jana paryo pasate Desham nitya vriyuktana Yoga kshemam maham yaham Epyanya devata bhattaha Yajante shadhyayan vitaha Devi mame vakonteya Yajantya vidhi purvakam Aham hilarva yajnanam Bhokta chakra bureva cha Nadu mama bijananti Tathe natasya vantite Yanti deva vrata devan Pitu nyanti pitu vrata Bhūdāni yānti bhūte jāha Yānti madhyā jino vimāṁ Bhattam puṣpam halam toyam Yomi bhaktyā prayachyati Tadaham bhaktyu bahusam Ashnāmi prayatāsmanaha Yatka roshi yadashnāti Yajju hoshi dadāti yad Yatta patyati kaumdeya Tatkuruśva malarpanam Shubha shubha palai revam Moksha se karma vandhanaihe Sanyata yoga yuktatma Vimukto mamu paishyati Samoham sarva bhuteshu Nami dveshyo sinapriyaha Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya Mai de keshu chapyaham Abhiche sudula charaha Ajate maam ananya bhaak Tadu revata mantavyaha Samyak vyavati tohi saha Shiptam bhavati dharmatma Shashvat chantim nigachati Kaunte yaprali jani Nami bhakta pranashyati Mani patha vyapashitya Devisyo papa yonayaha Hiyo vaishya tatha shudraha Deviyanti paramgatim Kimpunar brahmana punyaha Bhattaraja shayatatha Anitya matukham lokam Imam prapya bhagatvama Manmana mava bhattaptaha Madhya jimam namat puru Mamai vaishya siyuktaivam Atmanam mat parayanaha Verses 29 to 34. The idea is what is the disadvantageous position of people and advantageous position of people, what they gain. Even the disadvantaged can get moksha. That is the uniqueness of this path. For which he gives the examples. Who are all the disadvantaged people? And then 
if it is so if it is possible for the disadvantaged obviously it is much easier for those who have certain advantages that's all it is it's a it's, it's a very simple idea in terms of idea it is very simple that is if they can achieve it these are all the advantages of these class of people this is this brahmana and rajarishi for these two how easier it would be and then he gives what is achieved by all those people is having reached this transient joyless world you worship me having understood that this world that you are going through that you are experiencing is a joyless world <coughs> so the idea is what so the idea is do not postpone that's the central idea now whether you are advantaged or disadvantaged don't waste your time in analyzing where do i belong to what are the advantages i have or what are the disadvantages i have and get this egoistic stance of superiority or inferiority that's not the relevant idea what is relevant is to get this understanding what the world that you are going through the world that you are living in the loka means the realm of experience what you are experiencing right now is joyless is transient therefore with this understanding what you have to do sir, don't postpone these things it is a problem ridden world and what i am asking you to renounce is not something which is great or anything i am only asking you to throw what is dirt right i am not asking you to throw a diamond i am asking you to throw a crystal you have you have taken the crystal to be the diamond and holding on to it you guys no it is just a crystal throw that diamonds are there not here why are you unnecessarily carrying the crystals the diamond is av- available for you to carry mechanical gold you seen that movie mechanical gold other movie seven times seven times it was magnificent just to see in the screen nowadays you know you get the kick out of it because we don't understand the difference 70 mm 35 mm and all current generation will not know have you seen 35 mm movie you won't even know that in half the screen you will see If you, are, you have to sit in the center. If you are sitting in the corner, finished. It is a time the seventy mm movie and all. The soundtrack for the soundtrack we saw those movies. Good, bad, ugly. Just the soundtrack. That's all. Even today it's. gold is lying there this fellow is cutting the stones and taking what, what do you tell them hmm? carrying rocks throw the rock man take the gold that's what he said having reached this transient and joyless world worship me means seek me worship means seeking that's the meaning of it but just so necessarily waste your time holding on to things leave it the moment you drop that 
also drops it. That doesn't hold it. You are holding it. <coughs> exactly the same. It is Asukam Lokam Anityam Lokam. So the Lokam you have to add for both. Anityam and Asukam. <coughs> Joyless world. There is no joy in the world. That's not the meaning. Joyless world means there is no joy in the world. If there is no joy in the world, then where is it? Then where is it? There is joyless world. Asukam lokam. Means joyless world. Means what? There is no joy in the world. If there is no joy in the world, then where is the joy? Immediately we will say what answer. If it is not out, outside, it has to be inside. Oh. Now Vedanta will not leave there, these people. They will say, inside you where? He will ask. It is like saying, I have, I have kept my credit card. Where is it? In the house. Where in the house? Only then you can use the card, right? Hmm? You can't simply say it is inside the house. Because house is so big. Right? There you have kept who knows. Imagine, imagine Mukesh Ambani has to search. Huh? Your phone. <laughs> 24 floors that. Same way, his house is very small compared to inside. What is inside you? Where inside? Mind. Where in the mind? Hmm? Because mind has so many things, right? If it is not in the world, then is it in the body? They know it is not in the body. Then is it in the senses? No, it is not in the senses. Then where is it? It is in the mind. Okay, if it is in the mind, where in the mind? Of course, who is experiencing it is the mind. Whether it is joy or sorrow, both are experienced by mind only. Correct. If it is going to be in the mind, where? Next question we ask. They be get to the answer. Where is the mind, sir? Where is, which aspect of mind is the joy? It is in the expectations of the mind. Only then your answer is complete. Now you have got your credit card. So sometimes when you are, you know, booking suddenly it will ask the number. C L M. What is the number for in your card? <laughs> Credit card also you can memorize. If you ask her, she will tell you. My debit card number, credit card number, account number, all that she will memorize. Easy. So, uh, this if I ask how, how can you memorize? Has anybody memorized? How do you know that? So you need that. Only then the transaction will go through. You have to search. You have to pick it up. So, you say, Asukam Lokam, when you say, correct, you say, joy is not in the world. But if it is not in the world, then it is inside me. Where inside me? In my mind. In the mind where? Like that you have to detect. You have to go, penetrate, go deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper, deeper, when you go, you understand that joy is in the expectations getting fulfilled. Correct? I expect something, that expectation and the result matches. There is joy. When the expectations 
and the results were to exceed my expectation super joy right expectations and the results fall short so absolutely no connection i was expecting that i will be getting center i get 17 marks let's say what is that disaster isn't it internal so what we experience in our own life is expectations transacting with the result in that equation alone there is joy now apply the rule here what is the rule he says asukam lokam asukam lokam means what your expectations will not be met exceeded all the time the number of times your expectations meeting met being met is a v the number of times your expectations are not met if you take the proportion in life it is why because the law of expectations is expectations get met once next time expectation gets escalated you see that why we say asukam lokam expectations are it's not that it is never getting met of course it is getting met as far as we are concerned right even though the expectations are getting met still we say the world is asukam why huh? the moment my expectations are met what happens next moment my expectations gets escalated it goes higher i start expecting more and is there any capping possible for this for expectations escalation is there a capping ceiling sir it can hit up to this point beyond that it cannot go it keeps on growing as the possibility of the world to provide what is that during industrial revolution though that period all those people thought the resources were all infinite isn't it imagine those people would have had this idea like we are having today that the resources are not infinite you are not going to be getting infinite uh, sub sub supply petrol you are not going to get infinite uh, supply man now we say what such as a petrol you should not use now what you should use gas gas is also what this also is going to be what it will run for another 90 years okay after that that's not our problem Vedanta says, "No, it's your problem. Why? Why it is your problem? Huh? Come back. That's the problem. You are the one who is going to take reincarnation and come back here. Where else will go? So when you come back, what are you going to do?" See, these guys are far, far superior. <laughs> But at that point of time, they thought all the resources were the assumption, the the fundamental premises of those people at that time was natural resources are infinite. Apply. Now we have come to an understanding. No, it is not so. That is what Vedanta also says. The world's capacity to provide is finite. 
your expectations capacity your mind's expectation power is infinite will it ever match but sometimes i am experiencing it to be matching anityam that's why immediately he says this sukham that you are experiencing is anityam anityam asukham when he says asukham is the first part but then we argue back stating to the master that no no sir we are experiencing joy what about that he says anityam that is not permanent why it is not permanent don't start criticizing the world immediately don't start attacking the world immediately right it is not because of that it is because of your expectations getting escalated day by day and what is interesting is when your expectations are met it will escalate when your expectations are not met what happens is that right it still it will escalate you know that this is a mind no matter what happens your expectations are going to continue typical thing how you start positing you start fantasizing about future when your expectations are not getting met you start fantasizing about future you say we may be suffering in this life but we will go to heaven and enjoy all the thing that i what i am not getting here i will get in heaven what is that who is fantasizing about heaven ha huh? only the one who is not able to meet the things here isn't it the poor poor and i say i am not talking in terms of material okay his expectations are not getting met here so what he will do right now i am not having but future is very hopeful that is a difference between poverty and richness i remember when you know in malapo there was one fellow couple he was a leper he was affected by leprosy man they will have one you know the trolley like she will that or push it and this guy will be sitting there and they will beg i can't move up beyond my lap area they cannot go they will be move, roaming around only and we were also roaming around the same street so we keep seeing each other and this man will beg is a very interesting character he will beg and buy bd he will have bd like this is that the fingers are not there so you can't hold it like this also it's not possible so you will have it like this all around bandage you know full bandage once in 15 days or so you know that he will go to this uh, you know thing and then hospital and get you know treated for that and he will they keep many times i have seen changing also really wondered why he is leaving i didn't have the courage to go ask i i know if i go and ask him what will be the reaction and he had his wife his wife was there with him i don't know how you can and i have seen him you know lot of brightness in him 
contrast also I have seen. People in opulence, eyes are empty. See, empty eyes. There's nothing sparkling. There's nothing in it. There's no life in it. Just sleep. Dragging. So factually speaking, who should be in Jubilee is this fellow and that fellow should do what actually? Is it is not worth living man. Dying. Because there's no cure. And even if there is a cure, he can't afford. Even if there is a cure, he can't afford. Now, but still, what is keeping him going? what we call as hope. We call it as hope. Whereas this fellow doesn't have any hope. It's called expectation. This is what we call as expectation. Hope about future. Future is going to be better. That's called expectation. So where are you living? Your mind takes you to live where? You always live in the future. You drop the future. Imagine, suddenly a situation comes where your future looks blackout. In any situation, for anyone in life, the moment they encounter a scene, a scene where the future looks completely lost, no hope, what happens? What happens? Huh? Sorrow. Suicide. Suicide. That's the only option. Vedanta says, commit suicide. But don't kill the body, kill the mind. Because they don't know what else to do. See? Vedanta is also asking you to do what? Renunciation is what? Sanyasa is what? Sanyasa, when a person takes, what is he doing actually? Huh? That's a psychological suicide. That's called sanyas. You have to be so careful. Wow, sanyas. When the future gets blocked completely, that is why they say you are, you are supposed to have some something to look forward in future. Somewhere there is a possibility. Now what is interesting is, who feels that more is the person who is more miserable. Peculiar mind. Actually, the one who is in the miserable condition in the present, when he is stretching the future, it should be what? Uh, extension. Future also should be appearing what? It's going to get back to worse. Therefore, what I should? But he is the one who will be having tremendous hope. And that hope with which you are living is what he calls as expectations. Is what is referred as this. So don't blame the world. The world is innocent. And don't criticize the body. Because body is also part of the world only. They are innocent. Don't attack the body. Attack the mind, which is creating that expectations. 
and because of that expectations what we do another role another aspect of it this is this side of it we are we are all familiar with. i have an expectations i see that possibility in future i go and achieve it then what happens one expectations are getting escalated this is the first point we saw along with that what we have to understand is the another rule of life also what is that the moment you get plenty you get neutralized this we are not this we are not realizing you know we think you know let's provide more and more and more so by providing more to people we will be keeping them satisfied they will be happy this is our belief why because that is what our experience is our experience shows what that i was not having it therefore i was so unhappy even to get one pen even to buy one pencil i have to cry and fight with my parents to get that i want to go for excursion excursion now they do call it excursion excursion ana during my days how it is it's called as educational tour excursion na kare education tour it doesn't make any difference you know the bus tire will get punctured anyway both will but still education tour how much they have to cry the day they announce in the school we have to start we, we can't come home and tell them same day so they have announced you know, look into it no they have to go and plan for 2 3 days what we are supposed to do wash the utensils i'll get more water so we have to do it malapur no water we have to get it from the next street so we are, every day we are getting 10 you know and then now we will bring 14 today and suddenly you know for 2 3 days we are very very good at home study properly we have to plan because usually school you know they give 10 days time you know so they will announce again second announcement will happen in the school another four more days those who are wanting to give their names give your names you have given the name right anyway you have not paid money no so it doesn't make a difference take my name sir oh sir we are there we are there we are there we are not and then come home another two more days we have to pay that fee what was the charge uh, 75 rupees 50 rupees something like that so that is a big money then we tell the mother still uh, they are saying you know we are all supposed to go it seems they say who said because my house is no chance because my father is a is a you know association president is the teachers association president is <laughs> he will come so if he comes to my school my school principal gets scared because our you know my father will not come along will bring this you know group like a politician only will walk you know okay. so our uh, father will say hey who you brought your father la urga he wanted to come we tell him so is edukku what a drama how much of drama we have to do to get it now that fellow grows he gets married he gets a child and the child he feels what see i have to struggle so much to get it so before they even announce any education tour we pay in advance take yeah, the first term they pay all that together there is no problem so that so my child need not worry notebook textbook they want to get this uniform they want to get the shoe have a spare shoe also 
we think by providing all these things what are we expecting what we believe the law of life says what the moment you provide plenty anything that is more in number more accessible always available repeated contacts lead to neutralization you get neutralized no pleasure out of it the whole agenda of you is you want your child to live a happy life you wanted them to enjoy it that is why you are providing and the tragedy is your provision itself is counterproductive is doing exactly opposite what they lose the very capacity to enjoy imagine they they lose the very appetite itself because of your feeding see you eat for what coffee is a hunger in the process of eating you are destroying the hunger itself what a tragedy that's what he says anityam asukam please understand this man no matter where you are or what you are don't pay attention to whether you know uh, what is that women vaishya shudra brahmana rajarishi in this group where you want to be i ask who you would like to be everyone will vote for rajarishi would best is rajarishi sir no one would love to be a, a brahmana sir no use anitya masukam lok fantastic carnage Sacrifice to me, bow down to me. Thus, uniting yourself to me, taking me as the supreme good, you shall come to me. All of me, me, me. Height of arrogance. is just summing up the whole thing the entire thing you know he is just summarizing that and presenting con- concluding it there are five points he gives you five spiritual disciplines that's why it's a very important verse giving it giving a direction to self realization liberation growth mukti freedom whatever you say what are you supposed to do for that he says there are five things you have to do the price that you have to pay for spiritual growth right now if you pay this if you do that five what happens finally is it you shall come to me you get liberation what are the five things five things he is giving you fix your mind on me one second be devoted to me then 
sacrifice to me bow down to me unite yourself to me taking me as the supreme good so i am taking the fifth one first right for this to understand it easy because everything starts with fixing a goal so we say first thing mat parayana this bhava you have to keep adding Take, you shall take me as supreme goal. Why you have to take me as supreme goal? Because all that belongs to the world, they are all anithyam asukam. Just now we have seen it. It has a limitation. Whatever goal you have in this world, even if you achieve that goal. goal it is limited anything that is limited can never give you a sense of fulfillment you will never be satisfied it can never satiate you it can never fulfill you it can never provide you what you feel that you are lacking always you will feel a sense of incompleteness and that sense of incompleteness will always be driving you into a sense of insecurity whenever you feel inadequate whatever i achieve i will always feel not enough when i am not feeling enough obviously that will lead me to what i feel insecure can achieve anything but you will never feel that yes enough man that's it you will never feel that you will say i want little more little more little more add on add on add on it will keep on adding say i have had enough of everything sir now i have everything with me yes but now what i am going to do now i am ready to go for a world tour you will start and you will go go here go there go here go there all those things suddenly one day one fellow will come and tell you where are all this agla poniye did you see this temple Saraswati Mahal. Thank you. You, you go now. Yeah, thank you. Have you been to Saraswati Mahal? Watch. <coughs> now she will start. <laughs> What is there in Saraswati Mahal? Okay. Hamu contact aaye the tamte. Oh, next time what I have to do? Go there and see that. This original manuscript is there. You know, written by. Vidyaranya, I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay, example now. <laughs> Vidyaranya is you know original. Is there? You can see. You go all the way to see that. How was his handwriting? But you will feel that you know that is missing. You can never feel. anything you keep as a goal in life it's never going to be that's the end of it you see because the moment you reach the what is so interesting about the worldly goal is till you reach there it will appear like that's all i want i don't want anything more than this all that i want is this much once that is achieved settled All that I need is, you know, twenty-five thousand rupees a month. All of that. Now I ask him, the fellow says forty thousand. Hey, 
okay start at least taking me as a means first means to achieve that is the starting point of the practice of bhakti so bhakti will not start with nishkama the problem today we have is this straight away we think we are going to become nishkama bhakta nishkama bhakti ela you can't get the kama bhakti alone can be practiced only when you are having the nirguna ishwara gyanam you have to get for you to practice nishkama bhakti you can't be practicing bhakti the devotional connect you can you can never have with god when you start seeing god as a person who is going to be end in itself not possible don't make that mistake because that is intellectual aspect we are not discussing intellectual aspect here we are discussing emotional connect that emotional connect is possible only when you see someone as a means only then you can connect you can't straight away say he is the end no no the means to reach to the end so starting point is always what look up to god first stage is where you must develop that capacity to look up to god to reach which goal at least worldly goal that's a starting point straight away we all want to become phd scholars i will not go to school i will not learn you know arithmetic i will not learn the script i will not learn language nothing i will learn straight away i am going to become a scientist straight away i am going to become a surgeon you can be the i will not come illa straight away how can you you have to start from where you have to start he says take me as a means first so very preliminary stage is taking god as a means to achieve worldly then slowly graduate yourself to taking god as a means to achieve the transcendental first the terrestrial goal and then the transcendental goal this is the emotional connect mat bak be my devotee be devoted to me so me here will vary if you see carefully even though we use the word me 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 that me will change the stance will change i will be committed to me if you take krishna what will happen be committed to krishna means what Like these days, you know, people say, "Are you single or committed?" I say, "I am committed." <laughs> February fourteenth, they say, "I'm committed." Means already booked. <laughs> you keep your waiting list. Ravi Fala said, "Put me in Thakkal." Waiting list no parawa le. Thakkal la potu. so first discipline so first you fix the goal then you fix the commitment with intellectually so first thing belongs to the discipline of the subtle intellect right take me as a supreme goal subtle intellect fixes the goal then gross intellect processes the whole thing commits itself to the pursuit of it. develop that conviction commitment and conviction for it gross intellect manmana bhava mat bhakta bhava what is this that is devotional aspect mind 
now mind is coming so the moment mind comes what will happen you have to entice it to cooperate you see so you can't straight away go to that mind and say you do this only no immediately what you have to do is give it a variety this also okay this also okay but that is best that's why giving you the things so but what he is saying is only one point he says there has to be a emotional connect so intellectual connect emotional connect so these are the two points he is giving okay yes equipment which is relating to that the goal is fixed okay you know it like it doesn't matter who is fixing it right the generally goal means it has to be fixed by the intellect only because mind cannot be fixing the goal intellect is fix the goal now but just fixing the goal is not enough for the intellect to be done intellect also should be having the conviction to pursue it why there are so many things he has to be done so many things ought not to be done in the process of doing all those things very many challenges will come all those challenges all those all those temptations which can take you away from the pursuit needs to be handled that is to be done by the intellect that is called a commitment commitment means like, like they say about tendulkar say he had a long career for 25 years or so career he has never been late to a training session training session not for the match the training session he has never come late commitment about kapil dev they say you will not find him no ball you will not find you know kapil dev having no ball why in the practice session he will not bowl no ball that is a commitment you see that that's usually when you going for practice right how you go is very different from how you bowl when you are playing a match bowler la what intensity you bring you will not bring the same intensity when you are going for a training session this man i think ian botham also they remember in the training session when when they are practicing in the practice they will not cross the line that's that's called commitment you see no matter what i treat this also as good as match are legendary figures why they are legendary is because of that there are others also bowl practice they also practice distinctly you see the difference in them you can't say because these people are gifted with some talent of course they had some talent no doubt about it but it is not just the talent it is so many things that needs to be done who has to do all that intellect has to do it that is one aspect of it commitment another aspect is for the intellect to have that exercise that commitment develop that conviction that i am supposed to do it will be possible only when your mind is 
emotionally feeling for it. If that emotional feel is not there, emotional value is not there, the commitment will become what? Will slowly turn into rigidity and fanaticism. same thing which is supposed to be helping you to grow and flower destroys you. Why? That emotional connect has to be there. That's why he is immediately coming and saying what you have to do is be devoted to me. Not just having a commitment and not just that intellectual commitment that you can have. Otherwise, to put it in a very simple way, what will happen? You will become a great philosophy professor. You have a great commitment to learn Vedanta. What will happen? You will become a philosophy professor. You can't have a feel for the subject. You got to have the, the, the feel. The feel factor is important. Okay. Then, is this all said? He says, no, no, no. There is one more thing you have to do. Next one he gives is Matyaji Bhavati. Sacrificing to me. Suggesting the practice of Karma Yoga. Perform all actions. Sacrifice all your actions to the pursuit of the Supreme Good. How to do Alang has already told us. Chapter 4. The 12 Ekiyam portion has already referred it. So we are not have to, we have to go in detail for that. So what is the recommendation here, sir? You fix the goal and then practice Jnana Yoga, then practice Bhakti Yoga and practice Karma Yoga. So practice Karma Bhakti Jnana. And when you are practicing karma bhakti jnana, remember you are practicing all these things for the goal of self-realization. Without that connect, nothing will happen. Now our problem today is that to study Vedanta, why should I keep the goal of realization? I want to know what is there in Bhagavad Gita. I am studying. What will happen with that? What will happen with that? Don't say nothing will happen. Something will happen. What will happen? Deterioration only will happen. Don't say when you come into any spiritual practices, for that matter, anything you do in life, only two chances are there. Either it will produce something or it will destroy something. Action I have done, sir. I have committed something, I have executed something, I have entertained something, I have said something, but no effect at all. It is not possible in the world. Why? Because the world is governed by the fundamental law of the supreme law of what? Causation. If you are practicing these spiritual disciplines without having the connection to the goal of realization and not just saying, you know, that's where the problem is. When I say I am doing lot of service and activities, lot of charity I am doing, lot of this I am doing, lot of that I am doing, we criticize that. The charitable action of a person is criticized by the master. The guru will criticize it. Who? Not the indulgent. An indulgent fellow will not criticize. Now, one who is so charitable, he will be criticized. Why? Doing charity is not the point. Doing charity, is it connected to realization, the goal of evolution or not is the point. If this charity is 
done without that connection result is going to be what deterioration result will never be growth it cannot give any positive result it will eventually lead to negative result only nothing is going to happen now all those people who are doing charity will bounce off you see so charity we have to give it to you only so if you give it to you you will agree if you give it to someone else you will not agree the anger you will get so krishna is not going to bother about all that he will say what i don't care you have to perform sacrifices only to who to me alone such an arrogant statement height of arrogance like that we go but if you look at it carefully it is possible only by a man who has no ego only a egoless can afford to make such statements an egoistic will never make such statements impossible with such conviction he speaks ya ji bhav sacrifice to me so what you have to practice karma yoga you have to practice bhakti yoga you have to practice jnana yoga you have to practice this is what we read in the vedanta treatises positive religion negative religion what is it after practicing all these things what you have to do sir mam namaskuru you have to surrender to me what you have to surrender now sir surrender bhakt bhaktiya le is it not covered there he is segregating it he is keeping this as a separate point namaskuru is namaskara is part of bhakti no isn't it the, the many things that you do many you know uh, the stages of bhakti or many aspects of bhakti that you need to practice because bhakti is a series of things that you do it is not one act remember it is series of things in that series namaskara is also what namaskara means what pro, 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 prostration surrender that's what is translated as surrender mam namaskuru means surrender to me now is this already told in bhakti there is no there is after doing all these efforts for the goal of realization what will be lingering in you one thing will keep coming along result orientation because wherever you have given full of yours full effort that you had given in any field immediately what comes is this anticipation for the results to come the speed in which we expect the result to come about we will start wanting the result to come at the same speed in which i believe i am working so the result orientation will come he says no 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 that also you drop give that to me you don't worry about it he has already mentioned it no yoga kshemam mahamya i am going to give you man what is your problem he has already told us that he is not going to say anything new now he says that's what is referring drop that result orientation so what are the things that you have to do fix the goal then develop the conviction and the commitment then develop that emotional connect then offer all your efforts all your actions to that goal then 
drop result orientation. If you do all these things, what is the result? What is the fruit? Evam yuktva mamayeva Atmanam eva Nishyasi You will gain me alone. Me alone means immediately, oh, I will get Krishna, what? Ah, no, 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 no. Atmanam eva. What? In the form of self in you. You are going to gain me alone who is in the form of self in you. So what are you going to gain? You are going to gain yourself. You have to gain myself so much. <laughs> so reaching God is equal to reaching yourself. What you are going to achieve, you shall come to me. Who is in the form of the self. So he says, you shall come to me in the form of the self. That you have to add. If you don't add that, then you will start believing in what? Some loka you will go, suddenly you will die, and then you will go to that loka, you will be dancing with Krishna there. How long? Eternal you will be, Krishna will be dancing, you are also dancing. Don't you get bored? Rest your Adama. That's why he immediately comes and says, no, no, no. In the form of what? Atmana. In the form of the self. Very important words. Giving what you are supposed to do and by that what you gain, what you achieve. Of course, nothing new he is saying, but such things gives us a reminder constantly as to what we are supposed to do.